Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're gonna get this 360 running again. Maybe. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, that is Josh, and we are in Josh's garage, and that is our Ferrari 360, which, well, it had the wonderful 360 problem, which is where the heat exchanger fails and the trans fluid and the coolant kind of swap places and it really bad. Where are we at right now? Well, coolant's been kind of drained. The trans fluid's been drained. We have new trans fluid in. We don't have the coolant in yet because... Actually, I put just oh. I put water in there just yeah. for now because the first flush, we're going to just yeah. fill it with water, run it for a minute, and then drain the water out and probably do that a few times. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a, just a little bit of distilled water there. And then we're going to have to do the same thing for the transmission. We're going to have to run it, probably put it in gear, maybe even let it spin for a little bit, drain the transmission fluid, do it once or twice or three times until it's nice and good. We basically, we just need to drain it and look at it and see what the condition is. Before oh. we do anything, um, when I was tightening the regular belt, I broke the tensioner bolt. So oh, we have yeah. another one right here. So I got to put this back in there and put the tensioner back in. And then once I do that, I'll slap this belt back on. Oh, yes. And then it, it'll be startable. Startable. <laughs> well, actually, once we get the belt on, we can start it. It's got coolant and, and transmission fluid in oh, it, yeah. so yeah, we're that's not all gonna we got to do. Put all the stuff back in. No, we're going to leave all this out because we're going to check for leaks and stuff like that yeah, and make sure yeah. it's all good. So before we get going, real quick, if you want to support us, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Go check out NormalGuysSuperCar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your car. And if you're interested in buying this car or any of the other cars in our dealership, send us an email, sales at ngsupercars.com. This car is for sale for $94,500. So it can be yours. It's not gonna last long at that price. It's a very good car. It does have everything done to it. It's got yeah. timing belts, yeah. new heat exchanger. Bunch of top It's got an oil done. change. Um, it's pretty much ready to go mechanically. It doesn't need anything. And it's got the uh, Challenge Stradale wheels. Yeah, those and are the awesome Challenge wheels. Challenge Stradale grill. So it's kind of a nice, it's a nice spec. It's the Grigio Titanium? Or, yeah. Yeah, Grigio Titanium. So yeah, this is a really clean, good car. One of you is gonna love it. So anyway, all right, let's get going and get this thing started. I'm impressed with how easy this car is to work on. Everything's right there. It's like, I guess people are scared to take out the seats and stuff. It's really not a big deal. No. Everything you like need to work on is like, the, you could have the alternator out of this car in 30 minutes if you had to change an alternator or a power steering pump could come out in 30 minutes. AC compressor is right there. Um, all the belts are right there. I mean, I, I don't like the fact that they use three belts, one for power steering, one main belt, and one for the AC compressor. It's kind of weird, but whatever. Timing belts are right there, so they're easy to change. The headers and all that you do from underneath, so it's really pretty easy to work on. I really like it. They get a bad rap, but they're pretty good. Yeah. Everyone's always like giving Ferrari shit, but it's like, they're really well engineered cars. So I got my, I got my new tensioner bolt in there. So the way it works is the pulley goes on right here. And then uh, when you adjust this, it moves the pulley this way or that way, depending on how loose or tight the screw is. And that's what tightens the belt. Yep. Hey guys, we were just discussing, would you want to see Josh working on his cheap ass Jeep? I bought a cheap Jeep Wrangler, an older one, and I'm doing a ghetto eBay, Amazon build on yeah, it. Just got a bunch of stuff. I'm just doing it to, I live by the lake, so we're just like literally driving it down to the lake and like taking it to the beach and stuff. It's never gonna even leave town, <laughs> but I'm just doing the ghetto build on it. So if you're interested in seeing that, we could film it and I could show you some stuff. And Might as well. It, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing it. It's like an all in $10,000 with the car and the, all the parts and everything. Oh, oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> God, it's so much cheaper to work on these things. Makes me so jealous. Every time someone's like, oh, yeah, I bought all these parts for my car. I'm like, how much was that? Like, oh, two grand. I'm like, ah. So yeah, this is like a front bumper, a rear bumper, Nerf bars, um, LED lights, grab bars, all sorts of cool stuff. And it's like, all this was less than a grand. What? Yeah. This is one grand. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> all right, there's the pulley get installed there hello <laughs> yeah. josh is under there it's a little bit tricky huh it's not too bad no no not really okay all right got the tensioner in now we gotta just put the belt on i'm trying to remember how the belt went on here oh it goes you got this runner too though yeah Maybe. it's gotta go on the Does outside it go around that? that it's gotta right i think that's how it went <laughs> maybe i should look up a diagram can we take a picture of it 
That doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't seem like the No. I feel like this that. goes on the inside of it. That could be it. I've never... Does the belt, you know what? The belt goes on the other side of the tensioner. Of this, yeah, I think. You, Adam, you want to look up a diagram real quick? Yeah, definitely. Just to it's, be on sure. the, it's on the other side. Because when they have. No, ribs, I know that. I know that. I'm just. Con I'm yeah. just. Con if it's ribbed, it's on the rib side. If it's not, if it's smooth, it's on the uh, flat side. Okay. All right, we got the belt nice and tight. We so got the D flat on the note. D flat. Yeah, you know, they listen, actually. You gotta listen for it. Yeah. Bow, That's not bow. a thing. We're just messing around. It's ready to start. Oh God. <laughs> the computer's gonna wig out because the seats and stuff aren't here. It's yeah, like whatever. ABS we, failures and oh my God. We can clear the codes. Let's make sure there's nothing in the engine bay. It should turn. I know, there my it goes. gloves are oh, slippery. Where's the key? That's up here. I uh, say so you gotta do the alarm thing. You should probably crack the garage. Yeah, I don't wanna die. <laughs> the moment of truth. Oh. Oh, I didn't like that. Stupid wrong button. That's there we it. Go. There we go. There it goes. Look underneath, see if you see anything leaking. That's the oil. Okay, oil's good. No lights. There's no side airbags in these seats, so I guess there's the only sensor is for the seat belt. Oh yeah. And the power seat. It's only got three wires. It says the top's not down all the way. It probably isn't. Oh, I okay. put it down when the battery when the car was off, so oh, I didn't have yeah. enough power to close it all the way. Should we put it in gear and let it go a little? You're, you got the parking brake on. I don't know, it's kind of sketchy. Get out of the way, Adam. <laughs> you still have those wheel chocks in? Oh, the door. Uh, no. Where are those wheel chocks? Got to shut everything. Oh, it, oh, you know what it is? It's this. Hold on. There you go. Okay, it's in gear. All right, just give it a little tiny bit of gas. Is it spinning? No. Is that one? There it goes. Is that one going? Oh, there it goes. Okay, that should be good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we don't want to get too hot because then it's going to be all pressurized. Well, there's water in there too. Yeah. It's just straight water. Well, that actually will cool it fine. Yeah. Who wants to be the brave one to undo the cap? Let me close this. Because it's 110 today or something? 109. 109, whatever the f It was 108 yesterday. Third hottest day. I like day. Texas, but I hate the heat. It's ridiculous. Yesterday was just... Yeah. That was a new level of suck. Yeah. It's like... Even going outside and going down to the swimming or something, the water is so oh, hot. Dude. It's like my bath pool is water. like 95. Yeah. My hot tub is 106. Oh my god. Well, there's supposed to be. There's a chance of really high chance of blackouts today because. It's yeah, so they said it's rolling blackouts. All right, so I'm gonna stick a okay, do we have paper towel in there just to see because the oil in there theory There's definitely should, some. There's some oil still. It should come up to the top. There's some still there. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to do this. I I flushed out as best I could, but. Oh, it's not oh, bad. Oh, it's not bad at all. Just a tiny bit on the top. Yeah, wow. I mean, granted, we only ran it for a minute, so the thermostat didn't open, but... Oh, yeah, I guess we do. probably should do that, huh? That's okay. We also got to check the trans fluid, too. Yeah, we, get, we drain that now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I put the cheap AutoZone gear oil in it. Yeah, just, just for the first it. flush. Yeah, so we'll drain that out and then uh, refill it. It's super easy to do it. Probably do want to... Um, put the wheels on and lower it because having it up in the back, I feel like it's when you drain it, the drain plug is here and it's going to leave some fluid in there. I guess we can do it the first few times this way. Let's see how much bullshit's in it. Yeah. All right. There's the drain plug. That's the 14 millimeter. Oh, and oh Ooh, yeah, it's still gnarly. Tasty. Yeah. We still got some coolant in there. That's fine. We're flushing it out. Yep. That's how we're doing this. My milkshake brings all the blood <laughs> to the yard. That's one milkshake I would not want to drink right no. there. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like, it's better than yours. That's worse than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. 
after like put it filling it up with fresh fluid. Good thing we spun it a little. At least got I mean, a little. when I drained it, it was straight up coolant coming out. Like yeah. that's all that came out. And then and then transmission fluid came out. How far do you think it was when it was busted? It couldn't have been broken until it got here. Is my theory because it would have overheated when they were doing the uh, the time belt service. It's true. I, I mean, it's hard to say. I got about halfway home and it, I just noticed the temperature going up and I was like, pulled over and that was it. At that point, everything was already intermixed though. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. It, it, I think it had a catastrophic failure. It was like, good, 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 fail. Yeah. And it's probably literally on your drive home because guess what? It was living up north where it doesn't get that hot. Yeah. It comes down here, it's hotter and yep. it gets a lot of pressure in the system and pop. Yeah. That's my theory anyway. So hopefully it means it didn't drive very far and the transmission's in reasonably good I shape. I mean, the transmission shifted perfect. Even with the shit? Yeah, there? yeah, it was driving, <laughs> it, the car was driving perfect other than it was overheating. It started to overheat a little. Wow. Change your coolant, boys and girls. So I'm gonna pump another, <laughs> I'm gonna pump this thing full of <laughs> STP gear oil. Ooh, look at that good stuff. <laughs> All right, popping off the trans filter screen just to make sure that there's no new shards and crap on it. This is always kind of a pain in the butt to get out. It is, you gotta kind of yeah. like gently pry it. Yeah, I need, a, I need like a blade. Once it starts coming out, it's fine. Yeah. You gotta be super careful that yeah. you don't hit the screen either. I did that on my last one. Yeah, I had to the screen is like super fragile. I had to replace the whole thing. Yeah. There it is. Well, there's nothing in the screen, that's good. Oh yeah. Nothing in the screen, so that's good. Yeah, all right, so that up there is the fill hole. And so we've got the old crap out, we'll put in the new crap and probably repeat this a couple more times. There's a little dipstick on there. Oh, it does. Yep. No kidding. Minimax. Interesting. It's not very much fluid, surprisingly. Uh, it's like two and a half quarts, I think, is the capacity. Well, yeah, which really isn't that much. All right, we get to do this again. Round two. Round two. Okay. Are they spinning it all? You gotta give it a little gas. There it goes. That's the thumbnail right there. Do we want to let the thermostat open? What? Do we want to let the thermostat open? I might let it run for a couple of minutes just to get it up to temperature, yeah. Yeah. I just want to check and make sure it's not leaking anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I pressure tested it and it was okay, but you never know. Hey, pretty soon it's almost Should up Should be any minute now, it's almost up to 200. It's not taking very long on a day like today. <laughs> and with straight water in the system. Yeah, and with water. It's got a little pressure. That's good. That's a good sign. <laughs> it's, it has pressure in it and there's no fluid on the ground. I always hate that, having to do hot coolant open, opening. Mm. The game, how much do you trust the threads? Crawfish boil, anyone? <laughs> no, both Adam and I are like, we'll stand back. Yeah, I think we'll just give yeah, it a minute. I don't minute. want to be in there if I'm the one opening it. But if I'm the yeah, opening it, <laughs> we'll give it a minute. We can do the trans first. Yeah, we can drain this again. Yeah, we're gonna have to drain the coolant from the front now too. Yep. It's probably a good time to do it after this one. This is getting full. Ew. You know you know a car well when uh, you can just do everything by feel. Right? <laughs> Let's see how the coolant looks. Oh yeah. Still got some oil in there. This is like the gnarliest soup. Oh. oh. <laughs> so gnarly. Oh. Yeah, you gotta love when you get chunks. Congealed oil and coolant, so lovely. This was a Christmas storage bin. Allison's gonna be pissed. <laughs> the Christmas stuff will just have a little flavor. Yeah. What Allison doesn't know, Allison can't be mad about. Exactly. Just order a new one and throw that one out. Yeah. So those of you wondering how much does something like this cost, well, we think this service, if done by a dealership, is probably eight to 10 plus thousand dollars because if you think about it, you've got a ton of coolant, a ton of gear oil, the parts themselves, plus probably like a day or two or even three of labor, maybe even a week. So this could easily be a $10,000 job. 
I guess it's better than having a new engine trans though, so that's that's good, but I mean it still sucks. We're just saying this is a horribly disgusting job. Just oil, coolant, shit everywhere. It just it sucks. Gross. Mm -hmm. It's just gross. So we're already on our third trans flush and coolant flush, so we'll just keep going at it until it's basically clear, which might be a few more times. The transmission's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, the trans is cleaning up faster than the coolant. The coolant's kind of harder because it's just, I don't know, you get like a little glob here and there. Go for it, Adam. Old faithful. It's always fun removing caps on boiling fluid. So we're in about, I don't know, four or five flushes now or so. We've filled up all that nastiness and uh, we're still going at it. So we're getting there. It's starting to look much cleaner every time we do it. Oh. So I think we're almost there. Probably one or two more, hopefully. All right, YouTube, we flushed it a lot of times, probably about like seven times. Yeah. It's been we a have, long. We put yeah. like 20, 30 gallons of water through there. Yeah, at least 20, 30 gallons of water. And probably uh, 20 quarts of transmission fluid. Yeah. So we think it's ready to rock and roll. We're just kind of making sure it's gonna hold its uh, temperatures and stuff. And then uh, we'll probably take it out and drive it and probably flush the coolant one more time, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably do the coolant and the transmission and the fluid trans one, more one more time after time. we drive it a little bit. Yeah, we want to get some miles on it and then do it once again. What a pain in the ass this has been. All right, YouTube, we have new coolant in there. We just heated it up. We think there's still air in the system because it was getting kind of hot. Again, we're going to have to drive around some more, but we're kind of running out of time today. Drive it around for probably like a week or something, and then we'll flush the coolant one more time, flush the transmission one more time, and then we think this car is ready to rock and roll, and it's done. Holy crap, it's done. All right, if one of you want to buy this thing, send us an email, sales at ngsupercars.com. We do appreciate when you guys can support us by going to normalguyssupercar.com, buy your parts and services for your car through us. Use the code NGS10. We'll hook you up with 10% off most of the things we sell. And of course, like, share, and subscribe. That does help grow the channel, so thank you so much to all of you for doing that. We're going to be doing a lot of cool car stuff, so you guys are going to stay tuned. It'll be sweet. Oh, I don't have a mic. It'll be sweet. It'll be Adam sweet. Adam was saying, oh, It'll there. Josh said it. Josh got it. It'll be It'll sweet. It'll be sweet.